George W. Bush ordered their sentences commuted, but their convictions still stand. On February 17th, four years to the day after the original incident occurred, Ramos and Campion were released into home confinement. And tonight, they are finally free and they are speaking out for the very first time. Our Casey Wine has been reporting on this miscarriage of justice really longer than, than anyone. And today he spoke with the two former agents in El Paso, Texas. And Two and a half years. And she's done Former Border Patrol job. agents Ignacio Ramos and Jose Compeon have been out of prison for a month. They've been confined to their homes, reconnecting with their wives and children, but still restricted from re-entering society. Early Friday morning, their ankle monitors came off, and Ramos and Compeon tasted real freedom for the first time in more than two years. Get out all day long. I'm not coming home for a while. <laughs> um, go have lunch with some friends. The Ramos family's first trip out was to Nacho's favorite Mexican restaurant. Earlier, we spoke about his prison experiences and the day he found out President Bush commuted his 11-year prison term. How surprised were you when you found out that your sentences were commuted? I was very surprised. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, the day it happened, I broke down. I started crying and I got on my knees and prayed. Sum up your prison experience for me. What was it like? Hard, um, long, lonely. Um, you know, just wondering everything that I was missing with my family, knowing uh, I was missing so much. Do you miss being a Border Patrol agent? Yes, I do. What do you miss about it? The work, um, being out in the field, um, the camaraderie of some of the agents I worked with, um, and you know, I, I believed in, in the job. I believed in the work I did. As a felon whose conviction has not been overturned, he'll never have the job again, unless his ongoing appeals are successful. If that happens, Ramos says he would still take the job. While in prison, he received tens of thousands of letters from supporters throughout the United States, even from American troops fighting overseas. I can't thank them enough uh, from the bottom of my heart. It's what kept us going, or it's what kept me going in, in prison aside from my family. Tell me about your family. How'd they do while you were gone? It broke up the, um, you know, this family circle we had, and it was very hard on them all. You know, it affected each one of them in their own different way, but um, they were all very resilient. They all hung in there. For Jose Compeon, prison also kept him from his wife and three children. His youngest son was born just before he went away. Uh, I think that's been the hardest. Uh, when, when I turned myself in, he was only four months old. The first day when I got home, they were, they were still at school, and I got, once they got home, I was already home. I opened the front door, and both of them, the, the two youngest, just stared at me, and they didn't know how to react. Compeon never expected the reaction he and Ramos received after being sent to prison. I didn't expect it. I, I expected people to really forget all about us once we turned ourselves in, and so all of the support we received was was really unexpected and, and it was a, a very pleasant surprise. For now, he's content just to be home. There's really nothing specific that I want to do. The only thing I've been really looking forward to is actually getting out of the house and going out to dinner with her and the kids or taking the kids to the park and then just just being out together as a family. Both former agents are in remarkably good spirits. Compeon even wanted to thank the staff at the prison where he spent more than two years in solitary confinement. I'd like to thank the, the entire staff at FCI Elkton, especially the shoe crew down there. Everybody was very professional down there and I want to thank them. In spite of the situation that we were found, found ourselves in, um, you still have to count your blessings. And the people that have come into our lives, uh, We've seen many miracles. You know, there are more important things than the people that have done this to us or what we've gone through. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and dwell on that. You know, we're looking ahead. And like I said, we're, we're optimistic for a very good future. The agents con continue to pursue legal appeals in hopes of obtaining a new trial. For now, they remain on probation for three years. Ramos plans to begin work helping out in his father's insurance business. Compeon is going to help his father-in-law recover from an automobile accident. And I should say that's uh, Ramos's father-in-law's uh, insurance business. Uh, for both, it's too early to talk about long-term 
employment prospects, long-term career prospects, as we said, for now they're just happy to be home, Lisa. Yeah, they were away from their families for two years, and now they're just trying to reestablish, connect again with their families. Uh, just truly a, an amazing story. Uh, what, now, I noticed, Casey, that you didn't talk about the day's events. What actually happened the day with uh, Davila? Uh, why is that? Well, it's because there's, those appeals are, are continuing. Both agents, former agents' attorneys, requested that they not speak about the particular events of that day. You know, it happened o over three years ago. There's concern that uh, it could be used against them. And if they said something that in some way conflicted in a minor way with, with uh, what they testified to at the original trial. They just didn't want to jeopardize any future appeals by uh, having them try to recall events that happened so many years ago, Lisa. Yeah, so even though they are out and free, they still want to clear their names, right? I mean, what's the status? status right now of the appeals. Well, absolutely. Both of them, you can tell that this, this status of being a convicted felon really uh, is upsetting and something they'd like to, to get rid of. They, the two agents can't even uh, see each other. They, they can't appear together because be the terms of their probation mean they can't associate with other convicted felons. We're expecting to hear a decision from the Supreme Court any time now as to whether they're going to order the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to relook at this case. If, if the Supreme Court does not agree to that, their attorneys plan to seek an entirely new trial.